And a lot of people get in such a hurry skipping docks they forget to fish the bait. But I've been guilty of it, so I know what's going on when I see people doing it. And I'm like, yep. They're so enthralled at just trying to throw it under there that they forget to fish it. They throw it to where they need it, and they just reel it back in. But I think in hot weather, but yes, you make the cast, then you need to fish it. If you're an experienced skipper, the most, you know, like when you go to start skipping docks, the length of your rod's probably not the most key factor because I could skip with a 7.6, 7.2, or 7.1. My favorite's probably a 7.2 or 7.3. I would say, so if you're just learning to skip a dock or you want to try it, an average guy probably needs to stick with like a seven foot medium heavy. The reason being, when you start skipping, it's a lot of weight on your wrist, and it's a quick roll. So the, the longer the rod and the longer this handle, the more you're gonna fight it. Number two thing most of the time, you need to tuck your shirt in right here or poke it in your pants. Because this is, what, this is what's gonna hit your rod when you skip. So you have to keep this pushed in or you're gonna fight it. The stiffer the rod, the harder it is to get into learning it because the power is generated off the tip of the rod. You take your bait, you're just kind of taking your wrist and you're just rolling. So the stiffer the rod, you're gonna get you're gonna get it to slap back instead of to be smooth release, which is gonna cause you to have overrun on your reel. The other thing is most people try to tighten their equipment up too much. You know, they're gonna get into the docks and say, I'm gonna skip and I don't want to backlash, so they're gonna start trying to tighten down every brake they have, whether it's the braking on the inside, on the outside, they're gonna to try to have it too tight. And when you do that, every time you tighten it up, you're gonna throw high and to the left every time. So really don't make any more adjustments on your reel. You want it pretty loose. Because it's not how hard you throw, it's how you load the rod. But when you start trying to throw too hard is when you screw up. Tightening it down is not necessarily gonna keep you from backlashing. It's gonna force you to throw hard it's gonna be awkward on your cast because you're having to use more shoulder, less wrist, probably gonna end up backlashing more and you're gonna beat the side of a dock to death, which means then you gotta leave your insurance card so somebody can file a complaint on you, get the boat paid for. So what I do when I come to skipping docks is nothing different than I do offshore. Mine is pretty loose. Like you can watch, I reel this bait in, you can watch it come off the spool. That joker's loose. I ain't tightening it down much. If you're beginning and you wanted to come in on a side like this 13, I've got it set on four. That's, it goes to six. One, uh, zero being the lowest amount of the brake putting out in here. So I set mine on four like pretty much on everything. And on the side tension, it's pretty loose. If you're beginning and you wanted to come in and put it on six, it'll, it'll be okay. But as, as you get better with it, loosen it up. Because the harder you try to throw, the more mistakes most of the time you're going to make. It, 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 I don't know why. It's no different. I, I, like my dad used to tell me playing baseball. He said, when you swing too hard, you pull your head out. I'm like, I'm like you're in the bleachers. What do you know? I'm out here trying to hit this guy throwing gas on me. And then as I start fishing docks, I realize you're watching guys come in skipping. And like, they're like this. I'm going to skip this dock right here. And they go. They're looking over here. Look where your bait's going. Never pull your head out. Keep wherever your eyes is at. When I turn that bait loose, I accidentally threw that right. I was supposed to throw that wrong, I'm sorry. Wherever your eye is looking at, here's the number one. You ain't gonna learn this on YouTube, folks. I don't care how many Senkos or Flukes you buy in Japan and get on YouTube and say you're a skipper. Here's what you're not ever gonna learn. You know why? Because they ain't had to do it. Wherever this rod tips out when I turn it loose, guess what's going there? The bait, every time. So when you cast like, you know, bring your rod out here, most of the time your bait's going this way. So if I want to visualize where I want that bait, this is not a great one to do it on because Stevie Wonder can throw under this one. And if you think for a minute you're going to go skip docks and not hang, you know, people like, or backlash, you're just smoking crack. There's only two things that's guaranteed with skipping docks backlashing and hanging because you're throwing a bait where it's really you don't even know what all is under there it could be an extra cross member the boards are laying like this so you're trying to read the wood in your mind and vision how far the bait's going so you're going to hang so don't don't get frustrated you're going to hang take your time and go get it if you can't get it break it off do it again there's too much stuff too much wood in there 
You know, when I skip, a lot of times my whole deal is I just want to put the bait where I think somebody hasn't put a bait just to try to get a bite. Whether it's January or September, I care what time of year, I'm trying to target a cast that I think maybe the average guy, your competitor, you know, and this is a prime example of this dock right here. This one's a disaster. It's got X, it got cross members all the way around it. So when I make this cast in a tournament, I know there's a really good chance that there's a chance I'm gonna hang. I'm willing to take it. I mean, you're, th you're, you're trying to beat the wood. Most of that wood is treated lumber. It's not smooth on the ends. It's got splinters. That line's gonna pinch it. That's why I don't skip with braid. People all the time, why don't you skip with braid? Braid's horrible around wood like that. It's gonna pinch into it, it's gonna grab it. Because what you're trying to do then, when it's this hot, you're just looking for shade, a place that, I mean, you think where you wanna sit. So, so menus out in the yard, we wanna sit by a rose bush, or we wanna sit under a giant oak tree. We want the biggest shade, it's just about temperature. So the hotter it is, he wants the biggest shade. And when you get in there, if you could look around under there, you're gonna see there's brim, these docks have rocks and stuff under them, clay, you're gonna, there'll be crawfish. He has a, he's got a smorgasbord of food to eat. He's got cooler water. You know, he's just kind of chilling under there doing his deal. And there's some places you go, I, I, I firmly believe there's, there's fish that live on dock year round. They're just resident shallow water fish. And they may have been on this rock when it was cold, be under this dock when it's warm. I mean, they're just dock fish. That's where, that's where they want their shallow water. So everywhere I go, if there's docks, I'm gonna check them, no matter what time of year it is. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna plink around them a little bit. I mean, I've seen some dock fishing be really, really good when it's hot, like crazy hot. That cast right there is a backhand slide cast. It's a little bit, I mean, it takes a little bit to get used to. It's more about the wrist strength because the guys will say, hey, I've tried that backhand. That's something you kind of got to build up to. Most people, that if your wrist is not strong enough, you'll know it because when you do this right here every time, you pull it in, when you go to throw it, if your wrist is not strong enough, you're going to hit the water back here. You're going to start too soon. So the stronger the wrist strength you got, the higher you can float the bait under there. If you'll notice like these casts like this where I can, I try to throw the bait in the air as far as I can. The reason being is that more and more people skip. The fish see more and more baits. So, you know, I'm trying to be as stealthy as I can where some guys come in and they're like, you know, hey, watch me skip, you know, and they start skipping from like, they were gonna throw this cross member, they're like, they're, they're skipping out here like, oh, look at that. Well, he, he's gone, he's gone. You know, it's dead calm and he's sitting over there and it's like, Coo -coo -coo, he's gone. So. Dirty water, you can get by with it more. I've noticed in the last four or five years, if you're gonna skip, if you can get it as far as you can in there in the air, the better off you're gonna be. It's much more stealthy. One skip, and down. This from out here. I drew a guy last year in an open, and I'm telling you, he must have learned to skip. And he wanted to skip everything. Brush piles, trees, bridge columns, everywhere we pulled up, he's gonna skip it. And I'm like, bro, there ain't gonna be one left. <laughs> you know, so if, if you have any gap under there where you can get it in the air, I, I'm a firm believer now, I work harder at kind of keeping it in the air and being more subtle. If it's extremely dirty water and they're on that, sometimes I, I like a little harder skip because I think it lets them find it. But if you're like, where you know you're late in the year and you know the fish have been hit pretty hard try to be stealthy man try not to try not to come in there at 100 you know just ease it into there if you start skipping out here most time you lose the momentum anyway you're not going to get it where you want so why skip 20 feet out here and just skip eight feet under there so you visualize where you want your bait to go and you'll notice i'm not moving my body a lot i'm not getting a big wind up it's all in a good reel this is the 13 concept A, 6 8 to 1, 16 pound sun line. This time of year, hot, clear water, cold, clear water, I'm gonna skip 16 to 18 most of the time. Will I skip 20? Absolutely. If it's dirty water and I can get by with it and I think the bite's easy, 
I'd skip 22, I don't care. But if I think I'm gonna struggle to get a bite, I'm gonna stay 16 or 18. A lot more subtle cast, boat positioning further away from the dock than closer. Try to fish the bait back out some, because you're trying to learn where they're at. If you skip it in there and you fish it out to the edge, you get a bite, it kind of tells you that, hey, they may be more on the edge, may be relating more to the center of the dock. This, kids at home, when you turn on your, your YouTuber and your YouGoober and you see guys doing this skipping, it's not skipping, it's playing badminton. Skipping's not designed to do this, like, watch this, Jim, that's not skipping. Skipping's a very controlled cast, in and out. It's not all about that wind-up motion because that's not practical in a boating or a term situation. If you're a team partner and there's two of you up here, you don't have that much room. I can't go, hey, back up, Cole, back up. I'm on, I'm gonna make this, that ain't practical. So you're both working this dock in a, in a vision to catch five and win. You may not have all that room. You know, if my guy's right here and he's slipping right there, you can't both throw that way. So that's when you take a backhand cast but you're not going crazy with you just you're using whatever you got that's how I adapted skipping to my fishing it's because during team tournaments my buddy and I we had those smaller boats so we stood toe to toe so you didn't have a lot of room to move around and one guy always had the outside cast you know he always had his dominant if your right hand is dominant you can do that but you may not always have that you know you may have to come in with a back hand you may have to get in between marina docks and go under a cable. You know, you may be trying anything you can to get the bait in there. A lot of times we won't move. Him and I'd be toe to toe and I'll just come straight around with it right back under there because I'm not trying to disturb him. I want to leave him in his strong suit, but I want to make the cast too. So you got to visualize tournaments or in two guys in front of the boat or your dad and you fishing. You just don't have a lot of that much wind up room. And as you progress in skipping, as you, you, as you gain confidence and you get better about your targets and where you hit, then you can move the boat out further. But this distance right here in a tournament, you're gonna notice it gets harder and harder because you're having to really wind up, you gotta put a little bit more force on it. There's a soft zone in between there when it's just right. To me, about right in here, this is about as far as I like to stay away. I think I'm safe here, they don't hear me. When you encroach on that dock too close, you better be more experienced because you're losing your wind up room. So be real cautious and conscious of that as you approach the dock. Don't throw too soon. You gotta learn where your sweet spot is, the distance wise. And that's all in boat position and being cautious of where, where you want your bait to be. And after that, real fancy tackle I got here. It's the Zoom, the Z-Hog. It's the Gerald Swindle Buckeye balling out jig. Imagine that, 3 8 ounce, and I just slid a full skirt on it which is gonna, it's coming to you, it's gonna be available. But I just wanted more buck, just a little full skirt on there. I skip a three eighths 90% of the time. Other than that, I skip a half some. I think when it comes to skipping, it's a full blown technique, not a cast. So many people think it's just a cast. <clears throat> it's not, it's a technique. It's boat positioning, it's understanding the pattern, where you wanna put the bait, you're trying to fish a full-fledged technique, not just one cool cast. And you're trying, then when you get in on this dock, you're trying to micro pick it apart. You know, like where, where might he be? So you'll notice right now, I'm targeting the biggest area of the dock that I figure is the most hollowed out. So it'd be under the, where the boat could potentially be, the biggest shade, where it's clean. And I'll skip it in, it's 15 foot. I want to fish it back out, man. I might bump a limb. Might find something, a rough place, a rock. And a lot of times, when you get bit on a deep dock like this, you might want to repeat that skip because sometimes they'll actually, you'll be three or four. If it's 12 or 15 foot deep, that's plenty of depth for a school. Just hop it around a little bit, go to the next one. I want to stay out far enough off of it, I feel like I'm not making too much noise with my grass, but yet close enough I can gain distance as I go under. If you're too far out, you're not going to be it's really hard to gain that distance. And at this particular light time, I'm not trying to skip through this dock. I don't feel like that. I feel like if I was gonna get a bite, it's gonna be within the first six or eight feet inside that in the deepest part where it falls off. So you see, I'm not, I'm not really trying to gain like a huge momentum going in. I just want it six or eight feet under there. 
let her fall, fish her back out. 90% of the people when you approach a dock, they're going to be a fisherman, a right-handed, so they're going to, it's going to, this is going to be a more natural side going this way. Once you get that one down pat, then you might want to come in and learn the backhand. You know, you might want to come back in and start working on your game, just a little sweet backhand. Get it under there. Because what you're trying to do is be efficient. You're going this way and you're like, and the reason I like the backhand, so I get right here and I realize, hey, I may not have made that cast, but this, I can't go sidearm. But I can bring it in and backhand back under there. So I don't, this is out of position. So I just take my rod and go back. And the backhand is not that hard to get. Throw it nice and smooth. It's like dancing. Watch that line. Well, when that bait goes in, you stare at that line. Never take your eye off of it. Because when you get a bite, you need to get on him. Because there's a lot of stuff in there he can get around. I try not to have to reel down and check him too much. I try to watch that line. If I see it jump, I want to get on him pretty quick. You know, and if I could pick optimal equipment every day, like my, my perfect setup, seven foot three rod, medium heavy. Not heavy, not medium, medium heavy. 18 pound sunlight is what, if I could pick it every day. Three eighths ounce balling out, six eight to one reel. Why, G, why don't you throw a high speed reel? This is not gonna be a popper. Oh, God, I still got it. We got interrupted right in the middle of a speech right there. Spitting up crawfish, my trailer. This is not gonna be, he got it. I mean, it's dog skipping at its best. You see, I let it come out. I was sitting there talking, I fished that bait out. And I've already went over one time, like, don't forget to fish, fish your cast out. I, as you, I fished some with my nephew and a buddy of mine's son and I noticed that the young, younger generation, when they're learning to skip, they get so excited because it's so fun. They skip, but don't fish the bait. Fish your bait back out, make the cast and fish it. Why don't I fish a high speed reel under docks? This is not gonna go over well for some people, but to me, the higher the speed, the reel, the less the accurate the cast. The gears in it are usually not, and, and this goes across, the, I don't care what you say, every reel, the bigger the gear, the less it is that they don't cast as smooth, they seem to backlash a little more. I've just, I've tried them all. You get to eight to one, nine to one, or 17 to one, whatever you wanna do, it's not the same. Six, eight to one seems to be the most accurate casting across the board of all brand reels. So that's why I skip concept A, six, eight to one. Do it, that's what I went, this is the most accurate skipping. There's a couple of things from a beginner standpoint, even to the most advanced skipper, you always need to keep in mind. Wind dictates when you fish docks and when you don't. There's a certain amount of ripple that once it gets on the, the area you're trying to skip, you're skipping on what we call lumpy water. So you're never gonna get that smooth glide. So if the docks are super close to the water, you're gonna battle it. So there's gonna be times when you're doing this, when you turn into the wind and there's a chop, if you have to and you're just skipping, put the trolling motor high and go around that because you're not gonna be near as success, successful as doing it, but simply because the water doesn't allow it. It's the number one thing you gotta remember. There's gonna be times when it just, it's just, just too windy. Your expectations, what should, you, what should you expect? So here's the question, G, I go out, I'm gonna learn to skip. What, what should I expect from myself on day one? To get frustrated, to get really frustrated because your expectations will exceed your limitations of where you, where you are ready to put the bait at. Your eye will see where you want the bait, but don't get frustrated. Cast the bait. If you make a mistake, pull the backlash out, reel it in, take your time, slow down. To learn to skip is not done in a hurry. Go at a very controlled pace and try to repeat the cast. Try to repeat the cast. Just don't get frustrated. And if you're new to it and you say, oh, I'm gonna go skip all day. You're probably not, because let me tell you what's gonna happen. By 10 or 11 o'clock, your wrist strength is gonna be so exhausted, you're not gonna know it. Mentally, you're kinda out of the game. And let me tell you, about every other cast, you're gonna do this. You're gonna hit the water right here. It means your wrist is tired. When you see guys doing this, hitting it early, your wrist is weak. That's all it is. You're tired mentally. You're not holding the rod up far enough to release the cast. Your wrist is weak. So just remember that. There's a few things that kinda go hand in hand. You're gonna make a few mistakes. Don't get frustrated. 
but it's the best thing ever when you make the perfect skip and the line jumps and you crack him, son. I'm talking about like eating this big old bowl of cocoa puffs, just chawacky right in the face. Doesn't get any better. Can it win you tournaments? Yes. Can it catch you a few more fish? Yes. Is it a technique that I think you should sit down and learn if you're gonna be a career fisherman? Yes. Is it fun to learn as an amateur? Absolutely. I don't care what you're doing. It, it, it is a really fun technique. I think the number one don't do is have out too much line. I'm gonna say this much right here as a beginner, 10 to 12 inches. Back that up for you. It's like th this would be about as optimal as learning when you wanted to skip. Because the more you let line out, the more experience you need to have to hold your wrist up higher and float the rod so you don't back slap. So you kind of measure it down. Three or four guys down the rod, that's about where you want to start. If you get it way, way back here, when you reel it in like this, you better know what you're doing. And you're going to throw half of it out across the water. You're never going to skip it with that much line out because if it hits out here, you're done. You're done. See, he's back over here to this little dot and continue our little conversation. I'm seeing some rim over here. I mean, I think a man could probably... <clears throat> Son, if you think I ain't paying attention, I got reflexes like a cat the speed of a mongoose. I'll break out strand. I don't have to skip dock, son. I am not on the payroll. You bite my jig, swimming, I will jerk you. Hear me out, son. Respect my authority, fish. I am working on a piece for wired to fish. Do not rudely interrupt me. I seen him get it off the surface. I said, look at that brim. <laughs> I burned it through there and he went whop. I'm like, no, you didn't. I'll go ahead and tell y'all right now. I'm about that close to knocking the safety off and checking somebody. I was gonna let that fish know to check that assumption at your earliest convenience. Cause I will lay hands on you if you thump that line. You're probably asking yourself, why I'm balling out jig? Why not? Hey, you can skip any jig you can buy. I don't care. The reason I like a balling out, it skips really well. It's got a small compact hook and I don't lose a lot of fish on it. I like it. I designed it. It's what I wanted it. One thing you don't want to do, skip with a jig with a giant hook in it. You may ask yourself, gee, why not? Because the more plat the more steel you're trying to roll across the water, the harder it is. Think about it. Big giant wide gaff hook, it's gonna roll on the water. The further you throw, the less power you have on the hook set. And I promise you, nine times out of ten skipping docks, you're gonna get caught out of position when you go to set the hook. It's just the nature of the beast. You're skipping, you can't see what's going on, you pick it up. I mean, I caught one a minute ago, totally out of position. So I think with a smaller compact hook, I get such a, a better hook set and a better fish landing ratio. So I feel like in, in, in my def odds of having a bad hook set and still landing the fish is greater with a balling out jig than it is any other jig I've ever skipped under that. They make other great skipping jigs. I'm not saying that. Probably make some better, but I'm not gonna throw it. I mean, they make blueberry pie and people love them, but I don't like them. I'm not saying it ain't good, I just don't like it. When you head out for your first time skipping, you're getting ready to make your cast. Always remember that when you turn the rod loose, when I'm staring at where I want my bait to go, I want that rod to be pointing where I want that bait to go. Always try to remember that. Visualize where you want your bait to hit and keep your rod tip down and point it at the area you want the bait to go. If you pull the rod out here after you let the bait go, you're more subject to pull the bait to the left. So it's real important sometimes to visualize where you want the bait to hit and where you want your rod tip to be once the bait's released and in the air traveling because when you pull it to the left, you slow its momentum down. My rod tip straight where I wanted it to go, every time. Quick around over, rod tip right back where you want it. Also kind of keeps you in position because you never know on a quick strike. Because they're gonna catch you. They, I mean, they work as a team to catch you off guard. I can promise you that, it's gonna happen. Whew. Boy, I thought one fuzzled it. As my buddy would say, I was just about to go to crack it down on him, so. Don't do it, fish.